just think I almost got rid of my seven string guitar more than once. Many of you know the story behind my somewhat rocky relationship with the seven string here, but a lot of you encouraged me to hold on to it. I still got it and I've just been playing the mess out of it lately. In any case, I am going to share some tips on tones for seven string guitar and I believe you can apply these to really any down tuned guitar, especially when you get to those really lower notes. Now, before we get into this, I want to make a clear point here. Good tone is subjective. The best tone is the tone that you like and that also fits your song, album, or project, whatever it is that you're doing. And that tone may be one thing now, but it may be different when you get to another album, song, or project. So I just want to make that clear. There is no best tone. I'm just going to give you some things to consider as we go through the settings here, especially when it comes to lower tunings and of course, seven string guitars. And hang around to the end of the video. I'm also going to share how I recorded this cool song that I actually just wrote this morning of making this YouTube video here. Let's dive right into the EQ settings here. You can see my treble, it is cranked up there quite a bit. I've got my mids boosted a little, and then I've actually got my bass. It's right up the middle there, if not rolled back just a little bit. Now, not all amplifiers will have this ISF setting here. This is that, uh, that English versus British sound. So the more to the right, you get more of that British sound. If you go towards the left, it's more of an American amplifier sound. The reason my treble is boosted so much is because with lower notes, you get more low end. And this particular guitar, not all guitars are built the same, right? This particular guitar across the board, like on all strings, all notes, has more low end, just has more bottom end than my other guitars. Again, even on the other strings and all the notes, uh, so I find that boosting the treble a little bit really helps it sit better in the mix. Now that could be the build of the guitar, it could be the EMG 707 pickups. Uh, I'm in B standard tuning by the way, so I'm just standard tuning across the board here. I use Elixir Nano Web Super Lights, which I've never found string gauge to affect tone that much in, in my experience, but I just wanted to share that information with you. Uh, just overall, this guitar just has a, a more natural low end, so I find that boosting the treble helps. And this is something to consider, not just the amplifier, uh, but the guitar you're playing, even the pickups, you know, all these things kind of work together. Now we move over to the mids and you see the mids, I boosted them a bit. Now I found that with the lower notes, that helps it cut through the mix a little better, helps it just kind of stand out a little more. Now I used to be one of those metal guitar players, I just cut the mids, you know, the smiley face EQ. <laughs> I wanted that old school Metallica sound. And look, I still love that tone, especially when playing with my six string guitar. Uh, but in this case, especially with those lower notes, I find that it helps those lower notes cut through the mix and have a little bit more clarity with the mids boosted. Bass, I actually had that shave back just a little bit and for the same reason that we talked about with the treble, with those lower notes, you've got plenty of low end. This particular guitar just has more of a natural low end. So whereas I like the sound with the bass boosted and the resonance, which we'll get to that in a second, I like that sound when I'm just jamming and when I'm practicing, that sounds cool. You wanna feel that bottom end come through, but when you get into the studio and start recording your amplifier, you may find that it doesn't sit well with the bass guitar and the drums and all that good stuff. Remember this tone, these settings here, they are for recording, assuming that you have a bass, you have drums. This is the full mix we're talking about. So your settings, your EQ settings, even your gain, all that good stuff, that may or probably will be a little different when you're recording as opposed to when you're just jamming by yourself. Let's talk about the presence real quick here and the resonance. So I've got the presence boosted quite a bit and I usually have the presence uh, kind of aligned with the treble. I'll show you the treble again over here. You can see that's boosted quite a bit right there, the treble. Go back over to the presence, not boosted as much, but this just kind of helps the tone shine, especially with a seven string. And I think this would work uh, quite well for any, any guitar that's tuned down. Now some amplifiers have a resonance control and this is a real nice setting when you're jamming by yourself because you just get a lot more depth with that. But you can see it's pretty much up the middle, boosted just a hair there. Uh, so you have to be careful with that again in the full mix for the reasons that we just talked about. Now again, your amplifier may or may not have the resonance control and that's fine, it's not necessary. Uh, it's a cool option to have. And there are a few things I'm gonna go through with this particular amp. 
Before I do that though, I just want to give a shout out to Blackstar. And by the way, I am playing through the Blackstar HT Venue MK3 amplifier. This is a 100 watt head. Uh, it's got the EL34 tubes, and I'm actually playing this through a real cabinet mic'd up. We're going to talk more about that at the end when I go over the process of recording here. But want to give a huge shout out to my sponsor, Blackstar. Love this amp. Let's get back to the settings. Another unique feature that the Blackstar amplifier has is this ISF setting. Uh, in short, the more to the right you go, the more British sound you get, the more to the left, the more American sound. Uh, I kind of like mine, well, right where you see it there. We're gonna talk a little bit more about gain here in a second, but I just wanna share my settings. So I'm using the Overdrive 2 channel. You've got two Overdrive channels here. Uh, there's a voice switch. This just gives you a little bit more of a boost but my gain is cranked. In most cases, I would recommend do not crank the gain all the way up on your high gain amplifier. However, in most cases, you're probably gonna be playing with an overdrive pedal in front of the amplifier. And in that case, well, you don't really need the gain cranked all the way up because that overdrive is gonna give you that extra edge, tighten everything up and so forth. I'm not using any overdrive pedal in front of this amplifier, so I've got the gain cranked all the way up and well, you heard the mix earlier in the intro there. Uh, I could hear the clarity, I can hear the notes, so I'm really happy with this tone. Now, sometimes I do use an OD pedal in front of this amplifier, and in that case, I'll cut the gain on the amp back to about six or seven. And those are cases when I'm playing a six string guitar. You guys see my videos, I'm usually playing my Ibanez RG1570. Well, that has passive pickups. So I'm not getting quite the output that I'm getting, of course, with the EMG 707s in my seven string guitar. So with a six string with passive pickups, yeah, I'll throw a booster pedal in front of the amp and that helps. And again, that's just something that you have to play around with. You have to consider the guitar, the pickups, uh, the style that you're going for, the actual sound you're going for, and just play around with that. Uh, but I just want to reiterate that if you're using an overdrive pedal in front of a high gain amplifier, you may not want the gain cranked all the way up because you're probably going to lose some clarity with that. Now I'm going to go over how I recorded all this real quick with you, but first I just want to reiterate guys that good tone is subjective, okay? What someone thinks is just a great, phenomenal tone, well, you may not like their tone and vice versa. Hey, you may dial this into your amplifier or amp sim. You may dial everything exact and it might not be your cup of tea or a cup of coffee. Where's my coffee, by the way? Oh, it's right here. I'm all out, I need some more. But <laughs> my point is that it's all subjective, guys. My goal for this video was just to share some things to consider. Maybe you're playing down tune guitars or seven string guitar and it's just not sounding right. Maybe it's sounding a little muddy and a little flubby or whatever. Well, I hope some of the things that we went over, I hope that helps you dial in a tone that you like. So I just wanted to make that point again. Now, let's get into how I recorded this thing. And actually, I'm gonna share a couple of just standalone tones with you too. First of all, we have got the Blackstar HTV cabinet mic'd up with, well, the good old Shure SM57 microphone. Can't really go wrong with that, but I'm anxious to try some other mics on this cabinet here. I love this cabinet. Uh, I don't think I mentioned this earlier, but it has the Celestian 7080 speakers, and this just gives you a different sound. You guys know a lot of your tone comes through the cab and the speakers here. Forgive the dust here, guys, but I've got them, I really need to clean this, but anyway, I've got the microphone uh, connected to my interface which is the Quantum 2 by PreSonus. And I'm recording everything in PreSonus Studio One Pro software. For rhythm guitars, I record two tracks. And I don't just record a track and copy it over. I've had people ask me that before. Well, can't you just record the track and copy it over? Then you've got two tracks. No, you don't want to do that because that doesn't really do anything. It just increases the overall volume. I like to record two tracks and I'll record the first track and I'll hard pan that to one side. Then I'll hard pan another track to the other side and I'll record a second guitar track. So this really gives it more life in my opinion. And of course a lot of bands do this. I think Dave Mustaine, I remember him talking about this a long time ago. Uh, and I, I started doing this before I even knew how people recorded their guitars. I just thought it sounded really cool. Because the other thing is you can play something a little different, like some of the harmonies that you heard. Uh, there are a couple harmony parts you heard earlier in the song. And uh, you can hear those like in 
in, in each speaker, right? The one guitar is playing this over here in the left speaker and the other guitar is in the right speaker playing something a little different. The other thing is, even when the guitars are in sync with one another, you're never going to play that track exactly the same way. Now you don't want it too far off, right? If it's too far off, well, you probably need to re-record it. And hey, I had to re-record this a few times because I was writing this as I was recording it. Uh, but you get those little nuances between both the guitars when you hard pan them, when you record two tracks, right? And then hard pan them. So that's just how I record all of my rhythm tracks. The bass track, and of course I recorded the bass track myself here. I recorded that with my LTD D5 bass. I've had this forever now. And for the longest time, I've been using this plugin called Bass Amp Pro by a company called Studio Devil. I'm looking to play something uh, from Dark Glass. I'm looking to upgrade to something like that in the near future. Of course, I'll put that out here on YouTube when I decide to do that. Uh, for drums, I always love the sound of real drums, but for stuff like this, I just use Tune Tracks Easy Drummer. I have the Death Metal Pack and the Metal Machine Pack. So I just pull some loops down to try to fit my rhythms the best I possibly can. Now, I want you to hear the tone. I want you to hear how it sounds by itself. No bass guitar, no drums. Actually, there are two versions. So this is version one here, and this is just one guitar. Version 2, almost the same thing, but I'm going to play both guitars for you, okay? I'm going to have both guitars, one's panned to the left, the other's panned to the right, like we were talking about earlier, but no drums, bass, this is just the two guitars together. Now again, what you heard was a mic cabinet. Going old school, micing it up here. Uh, but with this particular amplifier, it actually has its own cab and speaker software. So there's a software called Cab Rig that Blackstar gives you with this amplifier here. And I covered that, I covered those tones and more in my complete overview of the Blackstar HT Venue MK3 amplifier. So go check that out if you guys haven't seen that yet. And guys, I really hope this video helps you dial in the perfect tone for you. Remember, good tone, it's subjective. You have to like it and you have to love it at the end of the day. And it's got to fit your song. It's got to fit your project, your album. Again, you know, what you're recording today, right now, what you're wanting to accomplish, well, the tone you want for that may be different than what you use six months, a year, two years, 10 years from now, because you will evolve, first of all, as a guitar player, and you don't want everything that you do to sound exactly the same. So you might go after a different sound the next time. And that's okay. Again, the purpose of this video was to help you consider certain things when using a seven string guitar or any down tuned instrument. So I really hope this helps you dial in the tone that you love guys. And again, leave me any comments. I will see you on the next video as always guys. Keep it metal and keep playing music.